On April 1st, 2020, Mojang releases a version of Minecraft unlike any other. Contained within is a virtually infinite number of dimensions. By throwing a book into another portal, it creates a link to a new world based on the text. There's a huge variety of possibilities, places of order, chaos, beauty, ugliness, simplicity, and complexity. It is easy to get immersed in the boundless spaces, the realm of unlimited possibilities. However, the 20W14 Infinite update has another side to it, one that's not immediately obvious. Beneath the surface is a plethora of oddities, unexplainable elements, and secret codes. Most of these are unknown to the average Minecraft player, but the few who look more deeply will find that their efforts are rewarded. There is far more to uncover than it seems. From the very beginning, there are some subtle hints that there's more to this version than meets the eye. One of the first clues can be found by loading a world in creative mode. When we open the inventory, we'll discover that the items have been mysteriously shuffled, no longer in the logical order found in the base game. This difference, while minor, suggests that perhaps we need to take a closer look at this list. Scrolling through, we'll notice that there are a couple of blocks that are unique to this version, not found in the base game. One such item is humorous in nature. The swaggiest stairs ever are stairs made out of a netherite block, perhaps an expensive flex for a late game world. Another new block is called the Cursor. It is a regular cube that changes color every second, switching between the textures of green and black concrete. But the reason for this block's existence is not yet clear. The most compelling addition is called the Box of Infinite Books. After it has been placed in the world, right-clicking on it produces, well, a book. It can be thrown into a portal to visit the corresponding dimension. The title of the book is several numbers separated by slashes. With some experimentation, we can learn that the sequence is generated using information about the bookshelf itself, including its location, orientation, and distance from the edge of the chunk. One consequence of this is that each box of infinite books produces one specific book infinitely many times, not a new book each time. Let's take a look inside. Opening one reveals that there are 16 pages of gibberish text. Much like the title, this changes depending on the bookshelf. We can't yet tell if this is pure randomness or if there's some sort of hidden meaning. Perhaps examining the author of this book will provide more information. But the mystery has deepened further. The author's name has been replaced with a sequence of chaotic, rapidly shifting symbols. In vanilla, text like this is only found in one other place, the obscured words written by the narrators of the end poem. To understand this more, let's exit Minecraft and look at the game files. The player data file contains information about the player, including inventory items. By using an NBT editor, we can take a peek inside, and it is here that we find the author of the book, Universe itself. It's a cryptic name, and it serves to pull us even deeper into the mystery. Now there can be no doubt that there's something special about this version of Minecraft. We are merely scratching the surface. Before we get carried away, let's take a step back and see what Mojang themselves have to say about this update. The official announcement provides an introduction to the game, alongside a YouTube video. It gives an explanation of how to make a portal. It also includes some funny bullet points. We learn that this snapshot does not use blockchain, and that there is an advancement for visiting 1 billion worlds called You're Almost There. It also has no bugs. Seriously, who said anything about bugs? But beneath the comedic veneer are hints of deeper things to find, such as the point saying that Moying added deep and engaging lore using immersive environmental storytelling. There's also talk of Minger sponges, square spheres, and a three-dimensional Turing machine. We see similar examples in the video, worlds that seem a bit more structured than the average random dimension. These must be accessible in-game, but how? One item of interest is a quote from someone named Bartos Bach. This is a relatively unknown Mojang developer. At this point in time, their Minecraft wiki page contains just four sentences. But here, he's talking in an official announcement. Barto's words imply that he was involved with the creation of this snapshot. With a bit of digging, we can find that Bach is active on the r slash Minecraft commands official Discord server. And it quickly becomes clear that he was the developer of 20w14 Infinite. We can scroll back in time to the very moment when the version was released, with the simplest of messages. Check your launcher. Most of the early exploration of this snapshot is carried out by members in this community, with the presence of Bach occasionally pushing their research forward. The first example of this occurs mere minutes after the snapshot's release, when Bach sends a video to the chat. It's gameplay footage. Bach opens a book in Quill and types, Missing. 
Then he throws it into the portal. The recording ends just before he teleports. So let's try this, creating a portal to missing. Upon teleportation, we find ourselves in the sky somewhere. The world around us is empty, or is it? If we fly around long enough, we'll eventually stumble across something rather interesting. It begins with three beacon beams slicing through the sky. As we approach, a structure emerges from the fog. It's quite strange. There's a quartz base with glowstone rings. A pair of iron golems flank the sides, but they're lifeless. They do not react to the player, even if attacked. Beyond the glowstone is a three-beacon pyramid composed of netherite, gold, and diamond. Stairs lead up to the top. These are the swaggiest stairs ever that we saw in the creative inventory. At the apex is a lone chest. Within are two of a new item, footprints. These don't actually do anything. Instead, they're a reference to a footprint particle that was introduced in a snapshot from 2017. But the particles were never used in-game, and they were eventually removed altogether. These footsteps appear to be a callback to this. The missing textures have been found. There is one final detail that's easy to overlook. Beneath the steps is a sign that says, this is not a sign. This is an allusion to the famous artwork, The Treachery of Images. Just as that pipe is not really a pipe, this sign is not really a sign. Instead, it's glowing pixels on a screen. Missing is unlike any of the other worlds we've seen. Instead of random generation, it's been specifically constructed to match the word in the book. And suddenly, we see a path to finding the additional special worlds referenced in the announcement. We can teleport there if we know what specific world name to use. There's a dimension that's referenced in both the text and the video, that of a Minger sponge. This is an example of a 3D fractal. It can be constructed by starting with a cube, splitting it into smaller cubes, and removing the center. Repeating this again results in more holes, and the process can be continued indefinitely. And apparently, one of these exists as a special world. So what might the book word be? Well, let's try the obvious, sponge. When we enter the portal, we do indeed teleport to a world composed solely of a massive Minger sponge. Appropriately enough, it's constructed out of sponges. Back on the Minecraft Command's Discord server, it isn't long until users realize that the slash warp command can be used to teleport to a specific world, no book or portal required. Buck suggests that users try slash warp green, leading to a world where everything is green tinted. Blue and red are logical next guesses, and these create appropriately colored dimensions. But just a few minutes later, something far more intriguing is found. A user named Wacky discovers a dimension named Ant. We find ourselves in a flat world of white. A sign at the center says patience. Beneath it is a weird block that's moving around. As it progresses, the color of the ground changes, flipping some of the white concrete to black. This is an ant block. It has no item form, and it only appears naturally in this dimension. While its motion initially seems chaotic and unpredictable, slowing down the footage reveals a hidden method. The ant moves step by step, and it follows three simple rules. If the ant is on a white square, it moves one step to the right. If the ant is on a black square, it moves one step to the left. Finally, whenever the ant moves, it flips the color of the square it was on. Watching the ant go, it's hard to escape the sense that there's something fascinating embedded within this system. How is it that this ant, with just three simple rules, produces complex and seemingly unpredictable patterns? This is a question asked by Chris Langton, a computer scientist at the University of Michigan. Chris invented the ant, and it bears his namesake as LinkedIn's ant. This experiment exists in the truly captivating field of cellular automata, in which basic constraints can lead to extremely complicated emergent behavior. Some of these emergent properties are far more advanced than we might think is possible. For example, LinkedIn's ant can actually be used for computations. A 2000 research paper shows how any Boolean circuit can be constructed by changing the colors of the starting grid. This ant is the three-dimensional Turing machine teased in the announcement video. But LinkedIn's ant has an unexpected surprise. If we follow the sign's command for patience and watch it for about eight minutes, the ant will eventually stop its chaotic motion, locking itself into a repeating highway pattern. From the chaos emerges simplicity and predictability. It is widely suspected that any starting grid will eventually result in this highway, but it's never been proven. We don't know for sure. By this point, users on the Discord server are discovering new worlds at a high rate. Bach is still here to give hints. He sends a message with Warp Custom. This generates infinite stripes of black and yellow concrete. The sign says, Under construction, I owe you one custom world. This foreshadows custom world generation, a feature which would be added to Minecraft later that year.
Soon thereafter, a user named O finds the dimension named library. This one is special. From the bottom to the top are rows and rows of boxes of infinite books, each with their own unique volume written by universe itself. Between them are walkways and ladders allowing for access to each book, extending indefinitely in each direction. This world is a representation of the Library of Babel, described in a 1941 short story. Written by Jorge Luis Borges, the story describes a library containing every possible 410-page book. Somewhere in this library is any conceivable text, any imaginable piece of information, any beautiful poetry, any depressing monologue. It's all here. All combinations of letters would exist, somewhere. But unlike the Library of Babel, each shelf in this dimension holds not just a book, but a world. Every single one is the key to a new random place. Library provides us a small taste of the immensity of possibilities. For a given seed, there are 2 to the 31 unique dimensions. That's over 2.1 billion worlds to find, and they're all somewhere on these shelves. In a certain sense, this library encapsulates the core nature of this April Fool's update, a deep commitment to the infinite. The mystery of the cursor block is solved soon after the discovery of the library. Bach sends a message saying that the cursor lives in the terminal. Warping there takes us to a giant version of the MS-DOS terminal, with the cursor blinking in place. Unfortunately, it's not functional, but it's cool nonetheless. This is a throwback to one of my more, uh, experimental videos about old screensavers. If you want to watch something weird, go check it out later. As more and more worlds are found, a question naturally emerges. How many custom worlds are there? Bach provides an answer with this quote. Okay, so here's a deal. There are 43 special dimensions. 42 of them can be accessed with a single word. To this point, 9 have been discovered. It would take only 75 minutes for users to find the rest. Some of these dimensions are variations on the regular overworld. For example, slime covers the landscape with a 10 block thick layer of slime. The busy world replaces ores with mineral blocks and redstone components. The biome is called Biome for Player with No Time for Nonsense. Another is the black light dimension. Here, light is inverted so that blocks look brighter at lower light levels and darker at higher light levels. Darkness makes the world, well, dark, and holes adds, well, holes. Decay is an interesting one. At first, it looks like the standard overworld, but as we travel from the center, we'll notice the occasional misplaced block. The further we go, the more noisy it becomes. Eventually, the chaos is so intense that there's little more than vague impressions of the shape of the terrain. There are a few dimensions that change the colors of the overworld, such as colors, which divides the world into four different tinted quadrants. This is clearly a representation of the Microsoft logo. After all, they do own Mojang. A related effect is found in the chess dimension, where the overworld has been transformed into an infinite chessboard. Another interesting one is Wall, which splits the entire overworld into two halves, a red half and a blue half. A giant bedrock wall separates the two. There is a single iron door connecting them. While the overworld variations are nice, the more interesting worlds are those with completely new generation. One example is Content. Here, we find a dirt skyblock with a tree. There's a chest containing a few items. I'm not quite sure how far you could progress with this, and I couldn't find anyone who'd attempted a survival playthrough starting in this dimension. If you know how far you could get with an empty inventory, let me know in the comments below. Speaking of comments, the dimension name Content is clearly a reference to how Minecraft is used for content on platforms such as YouTube. For an example, look no further than this very video. But this isn't the only YouTube reference. The Perfection World is comprised of an infinite grid of 9x9 cobblestone rooms. This is a nod to the YouTuber Direwolf20, who has an affinity for building structures in this shape. He even has a reaction video about this. There's another category of world generation, those which create unique patterns. One example is Brand, which has an infinite number of creeper faces arranged in a checkerboard. Speaking of which, checkerboard is similar, but with diable blocks instead of creepers. Unfortunately, it's unstable and crashes often. The pattern dimensions, while notable, are nonetheless fairly predictable. But certain other special worlds feel much more weird and alien. Take for example Gallery. An infinite walkway is punctuated by helical structures extending vertically into the void. The strands are made out of random blocks, and their individual heights vary. The result is a pretty unique visual aesthetic. It's as if we're seeing a glimpse of the artworks of some interdimensional being. 
Then there are the worlds that can only be described as liminal, such as bridges. An intricate network of in-stone platforms extends in each direction. They're held up by skinny pillars, impossibly tall, with the ground supporting them far out of sight. The sky is perpetually empty, a dull purple contrasting with the similarly muted colors of the bridges. Their size elicits a touch of megalophobia. Instinctually, we somehow know this place should not exist, and yet it does infinite and lifeless, trapped in an eternal state of in-between. There's another dimension that we need to talk about, one that produces similar feelings of limbo. But this particular world feels a bit more sinister in nature. Let us build a portal that leads to Lama. Upon arrival, we find ourselves in a small room. To the right is the titular Lama, living in a pen with a green carpet. The rest of the room is bleached white, save for a lone painting of a sky at dusk with a sunset. To the left, there's a pair of signs telling us to relax and enjoy. On the other side is a window looking out to a blue sky, except it's not actually a blue sky. Upon closer examination, we'll find that there's nothing more than glowstone and concrete. This window is just an illusion, a facade. It's no more real than the painting. If we keep breaking the blocks, we'll stumble across a chest hidden in the back. Opening it reveals a book by developer. Inside, there is a single cryptic sentence, nothing to solve. As we dig around, a chilling fact will become apparent. This room is encased in bedrock. Except for the portal, there's no way out. The entire universe is a tiny manufactured space, a hollow representation of relaxation. But things become more unsettling when we switch into spectator mode. For we find that this is not the only place in this dimension at all. Instead, there are thousands upon thousands of identical rooms buried deep within the bedrock. Every instance has the same false sky, the same signs, and yes, the same llama. These llamas will never interact with one another, and they will never escape. For them, their entire universe is their one room. They will never know that there are others just a few blocks away. A world like this begs for an explanation. But then we think back to the book, which reveals the most chilling fact of all. There's nothing to solve. There is no meaning to this endless prison, no reason for these llamas to be trapped forever. It just is. The llama dimension embodies a certain existential powerlessness, the unsettling thought that maybe, just maybe, nothing matters at all. However, at least this world has a way out. The same can't be said for the isolation dimension. Upon arrival, we find a single constructed house upon a super flat world of dirt. The architectural style is that of a villager with two stories in a garden. There are two signs on the fence post. One says, go away, and the second is a Swedish phrase that means, no advertisements, please. But let's just ignore the signs and enter the house anyways. On the main floor, there are three tamed wolves with red, green, and blue collars. Their names are Bob's dog, Bob's other dog, and their cousin Jim. Turning left, we can take the stairs to the basement. Here, there are several boxes of infinite books, but without a portal to use them. There are also three empty trapped chests, although they're not connected to any redstone components. Ascending to the top, we meet Bob, a jobless jungle villager. His room is simple but comfortable, with a bed, an empty jukebox, and a few decorations. One of these is completely new. It's an item called a very fine item, and it says home sweet home. Despite Bob's deep isolation, he seems happy with this place. His life is peaceful. But Bob has a secret, literally buried beneath the surface. Digging down under Bob's garden, we find a double chest. Inside, there's a suspicious arrangement of items. Bones, rotten flesh, and a sword named Stabby McStabface. Hostile mobs do not spawn in the isolation world, so there's no reason Bob would ever need a sword. What exactly is this chest? Why would Bob bury it so deep? And we can't help but wonder, was Bob always the only person in this dimension? Or was he so desperate to find isolation that he did something unspeakable, entombing the evidence forever? What was the dark cost of Bob's permanent solitude? Maybe we don't want to spend too much time near Bob. But before we leave, I do want to mention that the configuration of items in the chest is the exact same every time, regardless of the seed. This makes me wonder if there's some sort of code here. Perhaps rotten flesh is zero and bones are one, or vice versa. Also, the bookshelves in the basement spawn with the same colors in the same order, red, green, and blue, with yellow bookshelves notably absent. Are the red, green, and blue wolf collars supposed to draw our attention to the colors in the basement? 
I have a sneaking suspicion that there's even more to this world that we haven't yet found. There is, however, a place that more obviously contains hidden meanings. One of the shots from the Moying YouTube video shows several inships in an array. This corresponds to the dimension appropriately named Fleet. However, these are not quite identical to regular inships. For starters, the cabins do not have elytra, the item frame is missing. Things get more interesting when we look in the chests. Instead of regular loot, each container has a single book, entitled Orders. The name of the author is obscured, though we can see that it's a seven-letter word followed by a four-letter word. Opening the book reveals regular text mixed with jumble text. Each book is different. There are words such as discover, reinforce, destroy, capture, or find. Sometimes there's an extra phrase at the end, like mappings or modders or lost floppies. Thankfully, we learned how to view this chaos text earlier in the video. Let's open up the game files once again and load the player data into our NBT editor. Upon doing so, we can see that the author's name is Deepest Lore. Very interesting. Going further into the file, the hidden text behind the gibberish is revealed. Observe cheese. Deploy cheese. Restore cheese. Cut cheese. Wait, it's all cheese? No, not quite. The text in each book is created using a formula, a verb followed by an object. Reinforce toe shoes. Deliver mabruskis. Capture those pesky modders. Discover license-free mappings. Build Minecraft 3D The Lost Floppies. Deploy content. In fact, there are 12 verbs and 14 objects, leading to 168 total possible blocks. Despite the supposed deepest lore, I was unable to find many meaningful connections. It's all random. Nonetheless, there are some possible combinations with subtle hints. Find content could be a suggestion to warp to the content dimension. Then there's discover footprints, a reference to the footprint items found in the missing world. Another example is find bananas. And it turns out there actually are bananas to find. If we look in the 20w14 infinite jar file, there is a folder titled Nothing to see here, move along. Exploring this, we locate another folder, this one named banana. Within are two audio files, bananananana.ogg and bananananananana.ogg. These are the hidden bananas, and they have the sound effects that play during startup. Mojang. Mojang. It's yet another Easter egg from the golden goose that is 20w14 infinite. The remaining dimensions are quickly discovered by the Minecraft commands community. Some of these are funny, such as the nothing dimension. Warping there, we find, well, nothing. Except there actually is something. Teleporting to a specific place reveals a sign that says, Ha! I lied! This isn't nothing! The chunk coordinates spell out the first several digits of pi, and all it took to find this was flying over 1.5 million blocks away from the origin. Speaking of the origin, let's warp there. There are dyed glass blocks in three colors. The meaning of this is obvious. They clearly represent elements of the Euclidean vector space R3, which is a finite dimensional inner product space over the real numbers. R3 can be described as a Cartesian product of three copies of R. Notating the red, green, and blue glass rods as representations of vectors E1, E2, and E3, we can define the basis B as the set of these vectors. The projection operator pi sub i projects from R3 to R. The projector with element i enacted upon the basis set vector of element j results in a chronic delta. Thus, we have an orthogonal basis set, the proof of which is left as an exercise to the reader. Any further all right, all right, all right. Okay. Um, let's warp somewhere else. What about, uh, notes? Yeah, that seems nice. Or maybe it's not so nice. Okay, yeah, peace and quiet, peace and quiet. Where can we find peace and quiet? Uh, tunnels. Yeah, tunnels. Um, okay, it feels a little claustrophobic. Let's go to a different zone. Wait, why can't I see? Ow, there's poison! Okay, we need something simple, a basic dimension. There we go, basic. Ah, very nice, uh, eternal maze from which there is no escape. All right, all right, let's try retro. Yes, perfect, retro. Now this is a place where I can finish up my Vaporwave album. Hmm, I have the sudden urge to try new warps as fast as I can. Pillars, ooh, lots of pillars. Spiral, yup, that's a spiral. Rooms, yeah, there's some pretty big rooms there. Shapes, those are shapes. Sky grid, whoa. Okay, now this one is really cool. I could spend some time here. Such a fascinating aesthetic. Look at the negative space patterns. Hey, what about patterns? Very interesting. It seems almost as though this could be some sort of binary code. The squares are 8x8 grids with two possible states in each cell. And as we move in a direction, the surface changes in a way that appears to be binary counting. Sometimes, at least. This really makes me wonder if it contains some sort of message. Hmm, message. We apologize for the inconvenience. Alright, what could be left? Ah yes, the credits. 
And sure enough, this has the credits of Minecraft, constructed out of grass blocks floating in the void. And just like that, we've explored our 42nd world. Now we've seen all of the custom dimensions, or have we? If you recall Bach's message, he said that there are actually 43 dimensions, 42 of which could be accessed using a single word. This means that there is one more dimension out there. While the Minecraft Commands community was able to find the first 42 rather quickly, the final world remains elusive. The first progress comes when a user named Steve discovers a world named MyRobot. Warping there reveals a rather frustrating text. Ah uh, ah uh, ah, uh, you didn't say the magic word. Yeah, this is a 43rd dimension, but these words suggest that it's still not quite right. There must be some other, more correct word that warps here. Bot confirms that MyRobot is a collision, and in a turn of events conspicuously similar to a certain recent Darjean video series, the contents of the final dimension are encrypted. Just like 2Minecon.7z, it's encoded using AES. This is an encryption standard that is considered virtually unbreakable without the password. But unlike 2Minecon, this password is pretty darn secure. Box says that the name is a whopping 66 characters long. This is not going to be found through random chance. Although several users try to reason their way to a solution, Bach makes it clear that such attempts will prove futile. This is highly amusing, but I already told you you're not supposed to crack it. I wish I had time to design some puzzle into it, but it's just a phrase that's not supposed to be in any dictionary that I will release when I have my lols. In another two Minecon parallel, the developer statement doesn't really slow down the community at all. They continue to search for the key. Ultimately though, no one is able to figure it out. They would have no choice but to wait for more information. It doesn't take long. The following day, on April 2nd, Bach provides a clue. Okay, so I've decided to give you something to work with, but I still don't want it to be easy, so I brushed my very old project. The link connects to an audio stream which runs continuously. Let's tune in for a bit and listen to air.ogg. Out of all the odd things hidden in this update, air.ogg is the most disconcerting. The audio is, at times, downright unsettling. A recording of a music box followed by a child's voice. Strangely conspicuous musical intervals. Sections of Morse code. Bizarre fluctuating pitches. Extended sequences of seemingly random notes. And throughout it all, a consistent theme of numbers being spoken in different languages, one right after another. Zero, nine, zero, one, four. It turns out that these tracks are recordings of number stations. These are radio stations that transmit messages to covert operatives or spies. If the spy knows when to listen and how to decode the message, they can do so basically risk-free. The existence of number stations goes back to World War I, although they were most commonly used during the Cold War. In fact, they still exist today. Their simplicity remains useful even now. You want the numbers, Mason. That's all we've ever wanted. The tones and music we hear are known as preludes. They indicate when a message is about to be transmitted. And if we listen to air.ogg long enough, we'll hear a rather familiar prelude. This transmission must be intended for us. Let's keep listening. The audio is quite different from most of the number stations. There is no spoken text, only synthetic tones. Surely, this is the information designed for us to solve. Unfortunately, this code is one where you either know what it is or you don't. One Discord user named Ursatz had the idea that turned out to be correct. This might be an SSTV transmission. This stands for Slow Scan Television, and it's a method of sending images over radio. Unlike regular TV, SSTV takes a long time to transmit a single image, sometimes a minute or more. It was often used by spacecraft, such as the Soviet Luna 3 pictures in My Heart Beats from Space video. 
So what about air.ogg? Getting this to work takes a bit of finagling. I did it on Windows using a program called RxSSTV set to the Robot72 mode. You'll also need a virtual audio cable to provide the sound. Once it's configured, we can play the transmission and watch the image appear in real time. What we see is a handwritten note. It's a little difficult to read, but we can make it out once the transmission completes. This is a very long phrase that hopefully is not in any dictionary. At last we have it, the key to the 43rd and final special dimension. Let's open up Minecraft and warp to it. We find that the uh 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 text has been replaced. Now there's a much longer message suspended in the void. Hello. Only purpose of this message was to troll completionists and put my name somewhere in Minecraft again. I hope it wasn't cracked by accident. It was obviously supposed to take more time than other phrases. Written during time of plague by Bach. Yes, lowercase, because symmetry. All these worlds are yours, except Europa. Use them together, use them in peace. Europa, the moon, sold separately. And this final message is the cherry on top of the truly amazing 20W14 Infinite update. What started as a series of random new dimensions has morphed into something far more interesting. In this video, we uncovered an ever-deepening wealth of hidden secrets and mysteries. It's only fitting that it concludes with the signature of the creator. I think this video has covered most of the history, codes, and easter eggs surrounding this version, but there are a few things that I couldn't fit in naturally. The official announcement has a section about bugs, nervously proclaiming that this version has no bugs. And the author is nervous for a reason, because instead they've actually added a new bug, the ant block. We can find another intriguing connection if we look at the three generated books found in this update. There's a book from the Box of Infinite Books, the book from Llama, and the book from the Inships. Combined, we have Nothing to Solve, Deepest Lore, and Universe Itself. How can there be both deep lore and nothing to solve? Perhaps this is some sort of subtle commentary on how you make your own story in Minecraft. Universe could be a reference to the end poem's narrators. Or maybe not, but I did want to mention it regardless. I also wanted to bring up that the creative inventory is shuffled in the exact same way every time. I have to wonder if there's a reason for this. Even with everything I've covered, it would not shock me if there's still more to find in this snapshot. Try it yourself, play it a little bit. There's truly nothing like it in the history of Minecraft. Thank you so much for watching. I've wanted to do a deeper analysis on this update for a long time, and I'm happy to finally have that opportunity. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe. And if you want to support me further, join as a Deep Diver channel member. We'd love to have you. We will go ahead and end with that. I will see you all in the next video. Have a great day.